Brett Kavanaugh gives back, newly appointed Supreme Court justice serves meals to the homeless as he volunteers with Catholic charities in D.C., just days after grueling confirmation process. Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh shook off the effects of a bruising confirmation process and fed the homeless in Washington, D.C. On Wednesday. Kavanaugh was seen handing out meals while volunteering with Catholic charities. A somber-looking Kavanaugh wore a blue Catholic charities apron above blue business casual attire and a Washington Capitals baseball cap. He was seen alongside his former pastor, Monsignor John Anzeler. Anzeler, the CEO and president of Catholic Charities of the Archdiocese of Washington, stood by Kavanaugh throughout the days and weeks in which he was the subject of allegations ranging from heavy drinking in his youth to sexual assault. This is the second time in recent months that Kavanaugh has been photographed volunteering for the homeless after a milestone in his professional career. Two days after Kavanaugh, who was a judge on the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals, was nominated by President Donald Trump to replace the retiring Anthony Kennedy on the high court, he was seen handing out meals to the homeless with Catholic charities. On Wednesday, Kavanaugh volunteered just four days after the Senate voted to confirm his nomination, ending one of the most bitter and contentious political fights that divided the nation. Kavanaugh's confirmation was nearly derailed by allegations from three women who say that decades ago they were victims of sexual misconduct. Kavanaugh took the bench with his new Supreme Court colleagues for the first time Tuesday in a jovial atmosphere that was strikingly at odds with the tension and rancor surrounding his high court confirmation. The new justice dived into his new job, asking a handful of questions in the first arguments of the day following a traditional welcome from Chief Justice John Roberts, who wishing Kavanaugh a long and happy career in our common calling. Kavanaugh took his seat at the end of bench to Robert's far left just after 10 a.m., a visible manifestation of a moment that Republicans have dreamed of for decades, with five solidly conservative justices on the court, and Democrats have dreaded. Conservatives would most likely be pleased with Kavanaugh's approach toward immigration issues. The Supreme Court wrestled Wednesday with a case about the government's ability to detain certain immigrants after they've served sentences for committing crimes in the United States. Several justices expressed concerns with the government's reading of immigration law. Justice Stephen Breyer seemed perhaps the most sympathetic to the arguments of immigrants in the case. The immigrants, mostly green card holders, say they should get hearings where they can argue for their release while deportation proceedings against them are ongoing. Breyer noted that the United States gives every triple axe murderer a bail hearing. While members of the court's conservative majority seemed more inclined than its liberal members to back the government, both of President Donald Trump's appointees asked questions that made it less clear how they might ultimately rule. Justice Neil Gorsuch also seemed to have concerns about timing, asking a government lawyer about a hypothetical case in which the government knew someone's whereabouts but waited 30 years to take that person into custody. Is there any limit on the government's power? Gorsuch asked. Later, though, he told an attorney arguing for the immigrants in the case that he saw a problem with her reading of the law. Justices Elena Kagan and Sonia Sotomayor seemed willing to side with immigrants. Justice Samuel Alito seemed perhaps the most willing to rule for the government. He underscored how difficult it is for the government to quickly pick up everyone covered by the law and told an attorney arguing for the immigrants that Congress, wisely or not, thought that this class of aliens was dangerous and they should not be trusted. Bail hearings were unreliable, he said. Roberts and Kavanaugh, who was hearing his second day of arguments at the high court, also seemed willing to side with the government. Kavanaugh told Cecilia Wang, an American Civil Liberties Union attorney arguing for the immigrants, that Congress did not put in a time limit in the law. The ACLU had opposed Kavanaugh's nomination. But Kavanaugh also pressed government lawyer Zachary Tripp about Breyer's suggestion that there could be some limit on how long the government can wait to pick someone up in order to get to automatically hold them without a bond hearing. On Wednesday, it was learned that Roberts is referring ethics complaints against Kavanaugh to federal judges in Colorado and neighboring states. The complaints deal with statements Kavanaugh made during his confirmation hearings. They were filed originally with Kavanaugh's old court the U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit. Roberts took no action on them while Kavanaugh's nomination was pending. He received the first three of 15 eventual complaints on September 20, a week before Kavanaugh's angry denial of a sexual assault allegation by Christine Blasey Ford. 
it's possible the complaints will never be investigated if the lower court judges determine they have no jurisdiction over a Supreme Court justice under the judiciary's ethics rules. The judges may be forced to conclude that intervening events have rendered the allegations moot or make remedial action impossible, said Arthur Hellman, an ethics professor at the University of Pittsburgh. Another ethicist, Stephen Gillers of New York University, disagreed that the complaints are moot. Kavanaugh remains a federal judge and the complaints allege misconduct that occurred while Kavanaugh was on the D.C. Circuit and subject to the Code of Conduct for U.S. Judges. Any violation of the code does not disappear because he is now on another federal court, Gillers said in an email. But Gillers said the complaints may be found not to be meritorious in the end.